In today's show, just four games into the Trailblazers season, we know a couple things for certain. Let's talk about the certainties in the very early going. Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? It's your past first point guard, Trailblazers reporter Mike Richmond. Listen to another episode of Locked on Blazers, part of Locked on Podcast Network. Available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen. Coming at you Monday through Friday, every single weekday. So make it a part of your daily routine. Tell your friends to do the same. It's Locked on Blazers, your team every day. In today's show, we're four games into the Trailblazers season. Just four games in, but I think we know a couple things for certain, and I want to talk about what we know for sure after four games, and then we'll close the program. Kuka Heel from Locked On Pistons is going to join the program, and uh, we will talk about the Blazers' Wednesday evening game in Detroit that wraps up a three-game road trip, what the Pistons look like, and the art of the rebuild from the view from Detroit. So I think importantly... The, the the Cliff Notes version of this episode is not much. What do we know through four games and a one and three start? Just one game of Anthony Simons with, you know, after he has an injury. On that note, Anthony Simons today, the Blazers announced on Tuesday, October 31st, the Blazers announced that Anthony Simons uh, went underwent surgery and will be returned to full action in approximately six weeks. So we're talking the middle of December for a return for Anthony Simons. That's, that's some news up top. But what do we know? That, that's what I want to attempt to answer in, the, in today's show. We don't know a lot. We don't know a lot. And I, I think that's, that, 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 that's that I want to be honest there. You know, I'm not going to hit you with too many numbers because I think the numbers are really noisy this time of year. Uh, I think stats and lineups and all that stuff, that can wait. 20, 25 games into the season, you get enough, a big enough chunk, enough numbers to where things start to, you know, enough minutes played together for groups, they can kind of figure it out. But I think we know two things for certain, and I want, I want to touch on those. The first one is that the lack of shooting for the Blazers is going to be a problem, and a problem that permeates across everything on offense. Um, it's not... You know, it's it's not one thing. Like it's it's everything on offense permeates from shooting, and and that that is just it's just a, a fact in the modern NBA is that if if the defenses don't respect shooters off the ball, then all of the stuff you're trying to do on the ball is crowded and difficult. And the Blazers the Blazers half court offense, in addition to being run by a 19 year old chiefly, um, is and occasionally a 20 year old and Malcolm Brogdon is like. It looks crowded and 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 clunky. It is. It looks. It looks like there's there's not enough space. Um, that's just the truth. Th- so far this season, the Blazers are twentieth in three point attempts per game. So they're they're bottom ten in the league in just number of threes per game, and they're twenty eighth in in accuracy. Like they're not taking many threes, and they're bricking them, shooting under thirty percent from three over the first four games. 28 and some change. Yuck. Like, it's gross, right? They, it's just, it, they're not a good shooting team. And they don't have other shooters to go to. It's not like Chauncey Billups is holding out shooters. Like, uh, they have some theoretical shooters. Um, I think Matisse Thibel's a theoretical shooter. More on him in a moment. But, like, Chris Murray, right? Like, in theory, he's going to be a good shooter in the NBA. That's part of his appeal. Said so he's going to be a good shooter in the NBA. Got a lefty, lefty shooting stroke that looks pretty good. But say, you know, I think you want to play Tumani Kamara and Jabari Walker regardless. Uh, so, like, say you just give Chris Murray the 16 to 18 minutes that Matisse Thibel's playing every night. You just give him those minutes, right? I don't think that changes the geometry. Uh, something I talked about a bunch in this show, if you're, if you're um, a longtime listener, is that even though Matisse Thibel shot 38% from three last year with the Blazers, defenses didn't guard him like a like an above average three point shooter they still guarded him like his reputation and that has continued over this season he gets guarded like his reputation his reputation is a non shooter he doesn't bend he doesn't command respect off the ball defensively uh put chris murray in that same spot 
again, he's a theoretical shooter. He's not going to—a rookie is not going to command that respect. Eventually, he might be a good shooter in the league. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, if he were to play on Wednesday night against the Pistons, they're not going to treat him differently. And, and at some point, if you don't get treated differently, it, it really is— you got to shoot really well to, to make it matter um, if, if, there, if the defenses aren't treating you like a shooter. And you got to shoot a lot. you got to bomb away. you got to take, like, 10. Uh, so it, it's not like they have the solution on the bench. Scoot Henderson can't shoot. He's made one three through the first four games. Uh, Shaden Sharp hasn't shot well. I think he's a capable shooter. Malcolm Brogdon's a very good shooter. Um, Jeremy Grant shot really well from three last year. Hasn't shot super well yet from deep at all. He's, he has struggled. But th those guys, in theory, they can shoot. But, you know, I don't think Tamani Kamara is going to be a high-level shooter as a rookie. I don't think Jabari Walker, Jabari Walker hopefully will get there at some point in his career, and hope maybe even this season he'll end up being a good shooter, but he he doesn't, he's not a high-level shooter right now, and, and, and defense don't treat him like one. Neither are the big guys. DeAndre Ayton or, 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 uh, or Rob Williams get treated like shooters. It is hard for the Blazers to put multiple shooters on the court, and that permeates down to everything, everything. One of the reasons why I think the pick and roll with Scoot Henderson stinks is because he's not getting a lot of space, and he has not operated well in tight spaces. He hasn't operated well in big, wide-open spaces if it's in the half court, but like he hasn't operated well in tight spaces, and, and even moderately tight spaces, right? Like he doesn't have... If you can cheat in and say, we dare you, he has struggled there, and then he's made some bad passes off of that as well. I think it has really impacted DeAndre Ayton. Some of the impact of, for DeAndre Ayton is seemingly the Blazers didn't have a great plan for him. The plan was he's going to run pick and rolls with Anthony Simons, and the, the, we'll figure it out from there. And then when Anthony Simons got hurt, it's like, so what was the plan for DA? <laughs> like... You know, he doesn't want, he's not a throw it into the post a million times type of guy that wouldn't even like be, be super effective, but they don't even have, he doesn't even get that many. He's just not getting the many touches. Like he's not getting that many, like sort of direct entry touches, go to go do something. Um, but when he has gotten some touches in the post, you can freely double team him or send aggressive help. And he hasn't reacted well to double teams or help because he's not a super, he's not a great passer. And he doesn't have a super strong handle. He's a decent, he's like, you can tell he sees the floor. He's maybe not making the passes super quickly, but he he's reading the floor out of the high post and, and whatnot. But I um, mean, a great pass to Malcolm Brogdon late against the Raptors, but it's, it's not like he's a hub. Like you can throw it into him and he can be that crazy playmaker. Hasn't handled, hasn't handled double teams well. And you can just freely double team him. You can just go send bodies to him. It doesn't it doesn't matter because teams are okay to help off Scoot. Like so be it. They're okay to help off Thibel. So be it. Um, you know it's who Sharp um, Sharp can shoot and, and Jeremy Grant can shoot, but not at a level um, so far that teams have said okay. Well, we we gotta stay connected to them because if you if you have guys you can stay connected that teams have to stay connected to you leverage that around there. That's gonna matter off the bench. It's not like they have better solutions. Um, you know. Brogdon helps a little bit in that regard because teams will stay stay closer to him. But Malcolm Brogdon's best is like give him the ball in his hands and kind of let him go cook. And uh, sticking him off the ball while I think there's some value in it is maybe not maximizing what he does best. And so some of this is just like exacerbated by Anthony Simon's injury. Um, you know, in the past with Dame and, 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 and Anthony, the last couple seasons, it's like, yeah, maybe the Blazers haven't always had great shooting, but they've had a guy with the ball in his hands who's a great off-the-dribble three-point shooter, and Anthony Simons has, has developed into that, and and uh, and Dame was one of the best to do it. So, like, you could leverage maybe bad shooting lineups by having terrifying off-the-dribble three-point shooting, which then creates all this, you know, just defensive attention and then opens up stuff. The Blazers just don't have guys that have gravity right now. And the lack of shooting is going to stick around all year without personnel changes. Like there isn't someone buried on the bench or something they can do to create lineups that can shoot. It's going to be a problem all year. I think through four games, we know that for certain. Shooting is going to be a problem. And it's a problem for everybody. Like it makes everybody's life harder. Um, I think with a better plan, like if uh, shouldn't have snuck up on the coaching staff that they were a little light on shooting, but I think every time is getting hurt did maybe um, throw a wrench in what they wanted to do. So let's allow some grace and say they can, they'll have some opportunities to figure it out here in the future. Um, future's here though. Time to figure it out. Uh, I think, um, Shooting is going to be shooting is going to be a challenge absolutely all year long, undeniable all year long. It, I think that is something we know for certain. 
So one more thing we know for certain through four games. The Blazers, after months of a certain podcaster imploring them to pick a path, have chosen that path. It's pretty clear what they're doing. They are prioritizing development. That thing is certain. Let's talk about the values of prioritizing development and what it has, it has looked like and probably will look like throughout the season and why I think it's a good thing. That's what we'll do in the second segment. Join me there. First, let's talk FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. And right now, as we approach the midpoint of the, of the NFL season, New customers can get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. So we're heading into the week. We've got a Thursday night game coming up. Your Pittsburgh Steelers, America's favorite 4-3 and three team, play, playing against the Tennessee Titans. You put $5 on, on, on my beloved Pittsburgh Steelers. You're going to potentially... <laughs> Win 150 bucks, or if you don't want to bet on the Steelers because you do not have uh, family roots in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, pick a team, bet them, bet them to win a five dollar bet to straight win a money line bet for them to win this week. And once you get that victory, you get 150 bucks if your team wins. If you're thinking about joining FanDuel, no better time to get in on the action. The app's easy to use, and once you win, you get safe and fast withdrawal, so you get your money quickly. And if you get the 150 bucks in bonus bets, you can bet on a wide range of things like spreads and player props and over unders and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season one more time for you. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. All right. So we know shooting is going to be a problem all year. I think we know that for certain. The other thing we know for certain is that the Blazers are prioritizing development. When every Simons went down, they had a choice. Malcolm Brogdon is their best guard. You know, I think hopefully Shaden Sharp is closes that gap and passes him, and 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 you know, in a, in a handful of games from now, we can say Shaden Sharp might be the best player on the on the team. Um, handful of games might be generous. In some games, maybe twenty twenty four, we you you can make like a strong argument, right? But um, right now, I think it's 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 pretty obvious that of, among healthy options, Malcolm Brogdon is their best guard. He's their closer. He can dribble past, shoot. Um, the, the ability to get to his spots and all of those things. He's If you were trying to win games, getting 36 minutes a night of Malcolm Brogdon might be the path for the Blazers. But when Avery Simons got hurt, Chauncey Billups made a choice. And his choice was stick with Scoot Henderson as the point guard and put Shaden Sharp as your starting shooting guard and roll forward with that group. I think it was the right move. You know, I, I had a, a show earlier uh, earlier this week where I talked ex- extensively about why I think it's the right thing to do. Just like throw those dudes to the Sharks because even if you don't throw them to the Sharks, they're still going to be playing about the same number of minutes. So why not maximize some of their time together and figure out what you got? Because this whole year is about data collection. All summer long during the sort of Damian Lillard saga, one of my big... I don't know, talking points, things I harped on often, was that it was time for the Blazers to pick a path. And this season was the time for, the, for Joe Crone to pick a path. He had, he had to pick a direction, and he needed to pick it and, and you know, get all ten toes down, like fully, fully jump in with both feet and choose a direction. And the Blazers did. The Blazers did. They basically sat out free agency um, because the Dame trade was on hold or because they didn't— because. They were prioritizing a path. They wanted to have youth. They wanted to have six players who are either in their first or second season. They wanted to start a 19 and a 20-year-old, and they wanted to roll with that duo for a long time because the development matters and the rep, the reps matter. They picked a path. Dame helped them by asking for a trade, but they helped Dame ask for a trade by the actions they did and did not make. What the efficacy of the rebuild is sort of like a side part, side part of this, right? Whether it works is a discussion for another day, right? 
anytime you have a long tail thing with young players, there's a lot of speed bumps to get over and a lot of different paths and three years in the NBA is an eternity. It's hard to get there. But I think what we know for certain is the Blazers are committed to development. And I think it's the right, it's the right path to be on. It's the right thing to do. They, they are, you know, their their roster is really young. The back half of their roster is really young. So the, to some extent, they just have to play youth, right? It, it is what it is. But they have chosen this path. They are going to ride through the bumps and bruises with Scoot Henderson, who uh, after three really tough games, his fourth game, he looked a lot better, just a lot more comfortable. And hopefully you see that incremental um, improvement. Shaden Sharp, who looked pretty lost early in his career, although he was much more effective than Sharp playing basketball, but he looked clearly um, just not ready for NBA basketball in terms of like his fully understanding it. He just, his talent was, he's just a really talented basketball player. But in year two, Shane Sharp seems to have taken real strides and the commitment to development is committing to letting Shane Sharp play 35, 36, and sometimes 40 the last couple games. That might not be the best plan, but a lot of minutes to get reps and to play and to be, you know, one of the Blazers' best offensive players so far to date. This is a team committed to a direction, committed to a vision. Whether they've got the right coach to execute that vision, whether they got the right players to execute that vision, that's like, that's for another day. But I think for certain, through four games, we know that they are, they're about that life. <laughs> Stay on the porch if you ain't about that life. And they're off the porch. They are, they're, they are, they are, really, really living it. And I think it is It is a direction that's going to be a challenge and it's a direction that's going to come with, you know, some. they, they got handled in, in uh, some early games this season and they might get handled coming up later this week. Uh, it's it, It'll just, there are going to be nights that it looks that way. But saying, okay, Scoot is really struggling, we're going to stick with him, is, in my opinion, if not... It's, I, I think it's correct. Uh, I think reasonable minds can disagree if you, if you, if you would rather him come off the bench with like, whatever, go for it. Uh, but like it's, um, it is commendable that they have said this season is about development. This season about data collection. When we traded Damian Lillard, we didn't trade Damian Lillard to be okay. We didn't trade Damian Lillard to find out if Malcolm Brogdon could be helpful at 30 years old. We traded Dame and we committed to this group of Shane Sharp and uh, and Scoot Henderson as the backcourt of the future. And the backcourt of the future is also our backcourt of the present because because this experience matters for them. Because because taking lumps matters and they're going to figure out how it works by getting minutes and they're committed to that figuring out how it works. What we know for certain is they're committed to development. Okay. Those are two things we know. Shooting's going to be a problem and the youth movement is here and it's and the Blazers have a, an earnest commitment to it. On Wednesday night, they play a basketball game against another young team that has gone through a rebuild and since transition coaches, the Detroit Pistons. The Blazers wrap up a three-game road trip against the Pistons. Uh, new coach Monty Williams, Cade Cunningham is healthy. Jalen Duran is maybe healthy, maybe going to play, uh, but he's been balling this year. And uh, who better th to discuss it than host of Locked on Pistons, Kuki Heel. He's going to join the program in the third segment, and we'll talk about the Pistons, why they're better, and kind of the art of watching a bad team. Nobody knows what it's like, at least in my circle, what it's like to watch a, watch a bad, t a truly awful team and how sort of the art of watching a young team struggle like coup. So that's what we'll do in the third segment. Join me there, won't you? Still a pass, first point guard. I'm still Mike Richmond. You are still listening to Locked on Blazers. To close the show, I want to play you my conversation with Kuka Heel, host of Locked on Pistons, ahead of the Blazers' Wednesday evening game. You're listening to Wednesday, November 1st show, and tonight, the Blazers play the, Blazers play the Pistons on the road. The Pistons host, host your Portland Trail Blazers at the end of a three-game road trip for Portland. So, let's just get into it. Here's my conversation with Kuka. 
the host of Locked on Pistons. You read about him in the Old Man in the Three newsletter, and you've heard him everywhere you get podcasts and also on YouTube, YouTube rather, not YouTube, YouTube, Cougar Hill. What's the deal, my man? What's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, you know, living the dream, just like I was telling you off, Mike. It's good. It's good to be here. Day five or game five of the Blazers uh, season. They play the Pistons to wrap up a road trip in Detroit. Uh, the Pistons are, if not a good team, an improved team. Uh, why are the Pistons better this season, Koo? Um, Cade's healthy and playing. Um, and some of the pieces around him look like they've taken a step and gotten better. Jalen Duran looks like he's making a big breakout. Um, this is through and now it's only through four games. I don't want to go too crazy with it, but through four games, yeah, Jalen Duran's been been way way better. Um, and just a lot of other pieces as well. Just gone. Looks like they've gotten just a little bit better. Um, along with coaching, a coaching change. Monty Williams has has looks like he's making a big impact. Yeah, Jalen Duran is listed as questionable for Wednesday's game with an ankle sprain. So we hopefully we see him because he's a really good young player. Uh, but it's uh, we we will see. We're recording this prior to Wednesday, so we don't know what the deal is. But maybe you will by then. How much does coaching make a difference? Like how much does the coaching switch from Dwayne Casey to Monty make a difference? So I, I'm going to tell you a ton. I, I think it's a huge difference. Even though I think Pistons fans, as of this recording, at on or first of all. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween, um, exactly. <laughs> but on Halloween, 6.21 p.m. Eastern time, I think some Pistons fans will tell you not too much because they're pretty mad about the starting lineup right now. Um, but outside of that, um, yeah, I think a ton. I, I think just – I think you can tell, and this is – I don't want to take shots at anybody, but I think you can tell when you have not the best coaching and then when you go to – uh, somebody who has been known as one of the better coaches in the league over the last few years, it kind of is something that you notice instantly. And with the Pistons, Monty Williams' offense, his offensive philosophy, and how he wants to move the ball around and how he wants quick decision-making and all that stuff, you can already see it on full display with the Pistons. Their offense looks a lot better. Um, and then defensively, um, I think with Monty, he's running lineups that are more defensive-based. So that's helping a little bit, but also just defensively, he has guys buying in and playing a lot harder than they have in the last few years. So I think Monty Williams plays a huge part in what they're doing, and I think it's a big difference, to be honest. I don't think this team is too crazy different, at least right now from last year. Right. Um, maybe in a few weeks they are when Boyan, Monty, and Isaiah Lewis comes back, but even then, two of those guys were here last year, and now you know I don't think they're too crazy different. I think Monty is playing a big part. Yeah, I mean, Kate Cunningham being on the court matters. Uh, that's that's a big deal. But uh, yeah, for the most part, they're the same, right? Um, they they still don't have shooting, and he's kind of, and they still um, are, legally have to play two centers at the same time. Uh, except, I guess Isaiah Stewart is like their best shooter right now. Um, I think what we will see on Wednesday, coup is two of the worst spacing offenses in the NBA. I cannot wait to watch everyone get guarded in a box. Blazers just played the. Play the Toronto Raptors with their phone booth level spacing, and we're getting back in the phone booth to see the Pistons. Um, yeah, like I, I, I understand. I, I think I can understand frustration with lineup stuff with coaches, but like, it's not like the Pistons have a bunch of magical shooters on the bench that aren't playing. It's so uh, it, it, the the magic is maybe not there. Maybe they will get there. Um, but they're fun. Cade's really good. Cade, like he's he's going to be a really good player. He looks he looks great. From the I, I've watched a one one and one half Pistons games so far this season. So uh, I watched the, I watched the second half of the OKC game when they lost. But uh, but uh, I, I think what I, what you know look forward to that. And when both of us you, you know wherever you're listening to it, go listen to Locked On Pistons. Cool, we'll have you covered after the, they play the, the Blazers, and I will be right here with a recap of that Pistons game when the Blazers wrap up this road trip. But what I want to ask you about is like. Last year, the Pistons sucked. Like, they were awful. They won 17 games. This was, um, and it, it wasn't the first year that they were really bad, right? They've, they, you, you earned that first overall pick. As someone who does this, you know, professionally, you, you literally get paid to watch the Pistons. When you're watching a terrible team, what are the little things you look for to see, like, okay, here's a little improvement? Because I think a, a struggle for Blazer fans this year is like, is going to be bumpy. It might be a bumpy ride. So when you're watching that bumpy ride, what are you looking for? 
So I, I just want to say, I think it's going to be a little bit harder for Blazers fans to, to adjust to it because, for example, like the Pistons, like they've been one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in the NBA over the last like four years or so. Right. But before then, they weren't great either. Like before right. then, they were still just like a middling team. And it's like, you know, they're kind of fighting for an eighth seed or whatever. So they've been like, you know, a little, I mean, I don't want to say irrelevant, but basically for like the past decade or so. I know the Blazers, obviously, they've had Dame. And with Dame, you have a shot every single night. And with Dame, you have different expectations. So I, I do think it's probably going to be a little bit tougher for Blazers fans to um, get accustomed to it. But I, I would say the things to watch for every night, my first, my best advice I'd give is stop looking at the win-loss record. Don't yep. look at the win-loss record ever. And to be honest, I've had so many Pistons fans tell me this over the years, and it's true. Over the last few years, just gotten accustomed to not even knowing what the score of the game is. That's just like, <laughs> just like there there be at times where you're just watching as the fourth quarter, like, oh, it's a 20 point game. Did not know they were getting blown out. I wasn't even paying attention. So it's like when you're watching teams like this, it's not so much about the win loss record. It's more so just about the tiny improvements that you see from guys that matter game to game. So like, for example, like Scoot, I know Scoot hasn't started off that great. Um, right. I'm not too worried about it. I, 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 there was a stat that pointed out how bad Cade was when he started in the first four games and Tyrese Maxey and then LaMelo Ball. Like, guards, they usually struggle right out the gate. So, like, watch for a little improvement from Scoot game to game. Is he getting better with reading offenses? Is he getting better at getting to his spots in the mid range? Is he get, you know, those little tiny things, not even so much just the box score numbers, just those little, you know, in details in the game. Is he getting better at this part? You know, is Shane Sharp improving, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. Um, is DeAndre Ayton looking better at this? Is he, you know, this little tiny stuff like that. And when you get those minor victories of seeing those guys improve and they've gotten better, make a big deal about it. Enjoy yep. it. Have fun. Because if you don't, it's going to be a long 82-game season. You're not going to enjoy any of it. So that's why I would recommend. Yeah, I, I can't agree more with that last part. It's like – Okay, uh, you're looking for Scoot Henderson. He's he's one of 18 from three to start his through his first four games, uh, shooting a lot of bricks. And it's like if he looks more comfortable taking pull up jumpers, and instead of one of 18 over his next 18, he hits five, and he's still shooting 30 percent from three. That's a huge improvement. Celebrate it! Celebrate it! If you know DeAndre Ayton, who like hasn't caught a lob pass for the Blazers yet, has not caught alley oop. Kind of incredible, right? Should be like a, a, a vertical spacing role, man. When you start to get a couple little pick and rolls where he clearly starts to read the guards and the guards read him better, celebrate it, baby. You got to because it's those little, um, you know, like you said, the details, those micro skills. That's what we got. That's that's what the micro skills are. I, I want to ask you this. Did the Pistons wear you out a little bit? Because yes. I, I worry about that. I worry about that. Did they wear you out a little bit? They do. It, I, I'll tell you this much. They the Pistons did over the last few years, and also the fan base can do it too. To you, if it's, it's just you have to make sure. That's why this year for me, now it looks like the Pistons maybe could be a little bit better than maybe some people were expecting. But that's why heading into this year, right before the first game, I went on the podcast and said, "Look, I'm not going to be celebrating wins and losses. I'm not going to be watching for this. If they're better than near, this year, so be it." But if Cade's better, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to be happy about right. it. If this is better, if that's better, whatever. I'm not going to let people get me to, you know, this is 82 games, man. And the team is not probably going to be a playoff. Team. Even if the Pistons are better this year, they're probably not going to be a playoff team. It's, it's just right. probably not going to happen. So it's like, um, don't get too down the dumps about things. And and just, you got you to gotta match the energy, man. You got to understand that it, all throughout the offseason, even Blazers fans, I know they feel the same way. Throughout the whole offseason, you're like, man, I can't wait till the Blazers play again, man. I want to watch the Blazers. I can't wait till the Pistons play again. I can't wait to watch Cade. I can't wait to watch Scoot. And then the season starts. If you're already in October and November, you're like, my God, man, this team's terrible. I don't want to watch this no more. It's going to be terrible for the next four or five months. And then as soon as the season ends, you'll be like, man, I wish they were still playing. I wish, yeah, I wish there was a game that. tonight. Exactly, exactly. So it's like, just have fun with it. You have to. If you don't have fun with it, it's horrible for everyone around. Yeah, listen, the I think the Pistons are like, I mean, hopefully like only a year ahead of the Blazers, but maybe a little further. Um, but like, you know, a team that's, that's if things break right for them, they're a playing team, right? If if if, 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 if Jalen Duren continues to be like the fourth best 
center in the east somehow um <laughs> they're like then they're a playing team and, and if not they're a team that's on the rise with a good young core and you've got to appreciate the little moments thank you so much Koo, for for offering your perspective uh to my listeners Koo really does a great job on locked on pistons they're a fun team and he will guide you through the fun so go check it out there Koo, thanks again for for joining the program Appreciate you, man. And Blazers fans, have fun with the season. You have Scoot, man. Just have fun with it. He'll be better. Thanks again to Koo for joining the program. As I mentioned, the Blazers play the Pistons tonight at 4 p.m. Pacific to wrap up a three-game road trip. You can catch... All of the action and the hometown Blazers broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Trail Blazers. Uh, we will talk about that show, or we talk about that game rather, after it happens. So tomorrow's show will be a recap of the Pistons game. Tell your friends about the podcast. How about that? It's available wherever they get podcasts and also on YouTube. I appreciate you listening. I'll talk to you soon.